Hello, my name is Sean Roberts. I'm the Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network. And this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Aaron Ackerman, the Executive Director of Ohio Association of Elections Officials. Sorry. We're doing a series of discussions being that we're, or uh, questions and answers being that we're so close to the, um, the elections um, within a month now. Um, and a very good question from the perspective of the voter is, what should the voters, uh, what should the voters expect from around observers. Um, generally, I would assume these are either act activists or political um, observers and or poll watchers. Um, Aaron, tell me what you think. Yeah, so there's, Sean, there's been a lot of interest in this topic really since the presidential debate. I, it's, you know, President Trump in that uh, debate had called for his supporters to go out and, and observe polls and watch polls, which triggered a lot of questions about, well, who exactly you know, has the right to come in. If I'm voting in a polling location, can someone just kind of come in off the street and, and demand to see my ballot or demand to watch me vote or any, things like that? Uh, I think the good news is while this may be a new topic kind of for the public, it's something that we've been dealing with in the elections world for a long time. Um, many states have statutes that govern poll watchers or observers as we call them in Ohio. And many states have, have kind of contemplated how to regulate and govern that activity in a way that's um, respectful of uh, individuals' right to cast a private ballot in this country uh, and balance that with, you know, our desire to be transparent about our election system and allow access for people who want to come in and see how things get done. Um, so I think the good news is, um, you know, there, there's a lot of kind of rules and regulations on the books that I'm, I'm happy to kind of get into if, if you think it's be great. Far. Yeah, so uh, and before you do that, so the there's a lot of discussion around transparency and transparency, especially uh, um, as um, the American form of government, transparency is, is uh, certainly intertwined into law, but it's, um, it's an expectation that all of us have that uh, we, uh, FOIA requests, Freedom of Information Act requests are, are uh, a pretty constant in state, local and federal government that our expectation is we should be able to get access to information that um, uh, minus human resources type hiring and firing um, or, or national security, we, the public should have um, the ability to not only uh, be able to see that, but able to see it easily. Um, so the transparency here though is a little bit different because there is some privacy involved with the secrecy of the ballot. Um, there's a lot of history around um, nefarious um, entities, usually around a political party, wanting to either paying or wanting to influence um, individuals and groups of people and how they vote. And um, there's a lot of evidence back in the 1900s of how this was systematic. So that the privacy of the, the secret ballot is obviously important, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about transparency of the election process is the process of um, uh, uh, gathering and counting and sorting and storing the ballots. Is that being done uh, correctly, which obviously correctly, there's a, um, a lot of rules and uh, laws and regulations state to state. So I assume I give a lot of pref uh, lead up to that. I assume that's what you're um, focused on. Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. So transparency and privacy are, are somewhat mutually exclusive terms. And so it's always a balancing act in the elections world to provide that transparency to the public, but assure the voters that they are, you know, that their ballot is going to be cast privately and that they're going to be able to cast it free from undue influence or intimidation or any of those uh, things that we certainly don't welcome or, or want in, in our uh, elections process. So, yeah, so there's, there's transparency at multiple points. Um, certainly the, the actual, when you get kind of behind the scenes and we get the votes back to our office and we start to tabulate those, that's all a very transparent process. And there are rules in Ohio, at least the rules are pretty consistent. Um, as far as who can be an observer or a, a poll watcher. So really the only people that can, can serve in that role are people that have been appointed either by the political parties themselves and registered with the Board of Elections mm. uh, or an issue campaign. So like a local school levy who has a, that has a committee you know, could appoint someone, uh, an in individual or individuals as well to kind of serve that role. So it's important to note that it's a kind of a controlled process and that's where we strike that balance. We can't, we don't let, and we can't let just anyone came in off the streets and say, hey, I demand to, to be a part of this. That, that is not, that, that doesn't lead to good outcomes. But we definitely want to give people the opportunity uh, with the due, with oversight um, to come in and, and 
be part of that transparency in the process. And so these observers and poll watchers, at least in Ohio, you know, they take an oath, they undergo training, and the expectation is they're there to do just that. They're there to observe. I mean, the title says it all. They can't interact with voters. They can't come up and tell you, hey, Sean, you should really consider voting for this person or, hey, Sean, um, you know, you shouldn't really put your ballot in the thing, you know, in the scanner that way you should flip it around or whatever. If they see problems, they can talk to poll workers about it. They can call back to their, you know, whoever appointed them, whether it's a political party or an issue and say, I'm, I'm seeing problems out here. And then the party can reach out to the board of elections and we can route it that way. But they have very defined, limited, specific roles. Transparency is the goal, not interference. Uh, and really, a lot of states have very similar statutes and have had them on the books for a long time. So, you know, the, again, I know I'm being repetitive, but the goal um, as we come up on Election Day and then we enter that vote tabulating and vote counting process is to be open, to be transparent, um, to let the public uh, give the public assurances that we're doing it the right way. But at the same time, preserve that very, very important right of every individual to vote in a, in a non-intimidated, non-hassle-free and very private manner. And that's kind of what poll workers and poll observers are all about. So um, in order to be uh, part of the election process, the election uh, counting, uh, the, yeah, I'm trying to think of the right phrase, the election system. Yeah, the canvassing. Uh, uh, well, the, the yeah, in order to be part of the election um, process, I, I'm not grabbing the right word here, but um, as an observer, you have to be um, part of um, the current election cycle in some way, either as a, a rep, uh, as a uh, representative of a party that's up for election or representative of a issue that's uh, being voted on. How long does that uh, last? Does that last for election cycle or does it last for, um, I don't know, they, tell me, yeah. how's long, yeah, how long no. does that last? Yeah, in Ohio, again, since it's kind of like a registration process, uh -huh. um, you can register to be a part of different parts of the of the cycle. So you can come in and actually observe us testing the machines before they ever go out on election day. That's something we're happy to let the public um, watch and observe. You can sign up so that on election day, you're out polling locations, you're watching people cast ballots or you're observing that process. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you can register with the board um, so that when we're in the, in the, you know, tallying the count, canvassing the count, bringing the votes in either election night or subsequent to election night, um, and, and conducting that actual canvassing process, you can be a part of that and observe that as well. So there are different points um, at which you might want to, to participate as an observer. Uh, and then it's good for this election, you know, and then we'll, the political parties and the candidates and everyone else will regroup in two years or four years or next year if there's an election that's hot and contested. And, um, and Nope, you cut out. Are you still there? The, I, I believe we were on who's uh, able to, um, uh, how, of, how uh, often they're able to be, uh, um, how long being an observer yep. lasts? The, yep. the registration, does it last for one election cycle or multiple? That's where we're Yeah. Going. Cool. Do you just want me to kind of pick yeah. up with my- Go for it. Yep. So um, because we register observers and poll watchers or you know, Ohio observers, um, we register them every election because the rules change from election to election. And it's important wow. that if you're out observing, you understand what the rules and the laws that govern that particular election are. And they change, you know, sometimes dramatically. And so part of, again, part of being an observer in Ohio is undergoing training so that you understand because, you know, you're va only valuable to your political party or your issue or whatever, if you can observe that something may be amiss and report it back. And if you don't know what's right and what's wrong, it makes no sense for you to even be there. So getting that up-to-date training on the current laws, statutes uh, that govern the election is, is important. So the, the registration lasts for one, one election. How do they, um, how would they, uh, somebody who wants to be observer, how would they figure out when that, where to register and when the registration period begins? Yeah, the political parties are super, they're all, they're very much on top of this. Um, and they have, both of them have a long history of participating in the process. So they will, you know, if you're interested in observing and being a part of that, reach out to your local political party. They're aware of the various deadlines and, and the process and all that. And um, they'll, you know, they'll train you, they'll help you out. Um, they'll let you know where they're at as far as their recruitment. Would this Secretary of State uh, know how to get access to uh, either 
um, direct them somebody to a political party or, or have access to the online information as well? Or is it primarily word of mouth? It's going to, you're going to need to work through your local political party. Yeah. Because Secretary of State okay. is not, is kind of out of it. Um, wow. That's interesting. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. yeah. I, I learned something new today. I, yeah. I wasn't aware of. So that's, that's good. <laughs> I like that. Um, well, thank you very much, Aaron. This was very informative, very timely information. Um, let's do this again soon. I'd love to. Thanks for the invitation, Sean. I always appreciate it. Okay. Well, this has been Lincoln Short. <laughs>